there are many, many good ones, went and arrested a kidnapper in, uh, in, um, Taraba. in Taraba the other day, a couple of days back. And what happened? As they, abduct, as they got the man, and they were going to bring him, and these are successful policemen, they've done it over and over again, mm -hmm. fighting crime, stopping kidnappers, something we've been praying for. And all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're now butchered themselves by, by army officers, and now there's a sort of dispute going on between the police uh, uh, and the military as to who did what. The questions have to be asked. Why is it that we have a government that doesn't know that it is important to not only protect its citizens, but also protect its policemen who are doing the right thing? And police lives matter as well, just as the lives of every other person. I mourn those people, and I, and I, and I really feel bad for them and their families. Finally, they should also remember this. Our, our, our embassy in Congo DRC, I believe just yesterday. No, that was old. That, that, that news it's was an old from. Okay, it's, it's, it's an old news, and that has been resolved. I was really disturbed yes, by no, that. No, that, that was, I think, 2018. It was a legal Fine, matter so which has Fine, so it was still under resolved. this government. The issue is this. It happened in 2018 under this government. So it's a legitimate criticism, no matter how it's, old it is. It was a legal issue the where issue, the, the, it was no, no, given see, to the Nigerian the government. The issue is this. Let me and tell you, the old, you, may not be too, you may be too young to appreciate this, but let me make this point. The old Nigeria, when Nigeria was Nigeria, there is no African country, none, that would dare to do that. We're no staying in the property which no, no, a court no, has said it's not for it is a di listen. But there's a legality listen to it to also. Me, listen to me. If, it, if I'm right, in, yes. unless I'm wrong. Which is, if this, I'm, and this has been verified. There's if legality. I'm, if I'm right in saying that it is a diplomatic mission, yes. it is our embassy. If I'm right in saying that, yes. I have never in my entire life, and I've been around for quite some time, okay, never have I seen that you will use due process against an, interna you know, an embassy of a foreign government because that under international is regarded as a territory of that government. There are ways of managing these. So I will never justify that. And if I were the president of this country and that happened to any of my emb country's embassies anywhere in the world, it would be a matter that I would take up at the highest level. So it's not acceptable. And it happened under this government. This is a, and the reason they're doing it is because they've lost respect for us. Chief Femi Fani so, Kaede, in terms of drawing the public's attention yes. to the thousands of people that are killed on a daily basis, I agree with you on that. I agree that yes. um, we shouldn't wait for it to get to our backyard before we are drawing public attention to this yeah. issue. So I do agree and I applaud you for speaking as a statesman in drawing the public's attention to the constant insecurity issues that are going on in the nation. Mm. But I know if I plead with you to accept to guard your sentences, your statements moving forward in terms of the unity of the nation, we... That we would be very forward of you to appeal to me to do that. And I won't take that from you or from anybody else. <laughs> Let me tell you something. As long as I see injustice, I, if I'm the only person in this country, I will speak against it. As long as I see the powerful overwhelming and terrorizing and killing the weak and inflicting injustice on them, I will speak about it. And I'm prepared to say that injustice cannot be tolerated in any sane society. And there are many, many people in this country that are being treated unjustly and injustice is being inflicted on them. So many. And the problem I'll go back to is that we have become insensitive to that. Most of our elites don't care until it touches them. I have to say this, just the other day, when the four or five pastors from Redeem were, were abducted, it is at that point that one of the most revered and one of the best men and most godly men in this country got up and said, you know, we've never had a government this bad. Now, it's not about even the government. It's about our state. We are living in a state of anomie. More Nigerians have been killed over the last four years. I'd even say longer than that, maybe the last 10 years, than at any other time in our history other than during the Civil War. And you expect me, or others expect me and others. Look, let me tell you, no responsible leader will sit quietly and watch what is happening to people and not speak out. Speaking out is important. We, we must will speak do so. out, but we must, we must no, no, speak no, out no. respectfully. No, we no, must no, no, speak no, no, out no, no, intelligently. See, see, see. We must speak out well, for the, the unity of, of the what nation. You just said. We can't speak out in 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 uh, with a goal to divide the nation Listen even further. Me. We're treading through very sensitive times. Listen to me. And that is why I keep on reiterating to everyone who has ears. If we keep on speaking the way that we are right now in this country, we wouldn't have a country to call ours in five years from now. So yes. Yes, we will dis oh, agree to oh. disagree in the way that we are speaking to Nigerians. However, I would make sure all my audience 
um, know this, all the people who look up to me oh. and watch this program, please guard your rhetoric. We are treading through very sensitive times in Nigeria today. Yes, call out insecurity where you see it. Yes, call out the government when they do something wrong. Yes, protest. It's your fundamental human right to protest. But let us guard our words. Don't be swayed by politicians from the PDP oh, or the APC I, who want you to speak a certain I, way I, against I, your I, fellow I, human beings. That is wrong, and I will not right, tolerate that. But unfortunately, I'm, well, so very, I'm so sorry. But, but, I'm but, but, so but, sorry. I'm so sorry, Honorable Minister. It's 9:50, and we have to take the sports well, segment. But we will continue the conversation on social we, we media. Will Please, um, we'll take a short break right now, and we'll bring you five minutes of the sports segment of the weekend show. We're so sorry that it's going to take so so short of a time, but um, please don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back. Thank you so much, Chief Fanny <laughs> Fagadi, <laughs> Fanny for coming Thank on the program. <laughs> Thank you so much for investing your time with us today. Odiri, we're so sorry we ate into your yeah. segment. Just give us a brief rundown of what you're going to talk about in this sports segment. Uh, it was going to be uh, a preview or review of the deadline day transfers and uh, what happened. Liverpool, Norwich. Yeah, Liverpool, Norwich. What a beautiful first half. The, the Norwich City fans just decided, well, we've lost 4 nil first half. So they started singing, oh, we won the second half 1-0. Do you think that they deserve a place after that performance? No, they do deserve a place. They just decided that they wanted to attack themselves throughout the game. So they deserve a place to get there. Okay. Wow. So what we're going to do now is sign off. Odori, thank you so much. Um, we're going to sign off now by Wayla. Thank you so much. Take it away. They scored two goals. The first goal, they scored themselves. <laughs> and then yeah, the second. Well, that, that was good. Yes. I'm looking at my Chelsea fans. Chelsea fans, just get ready for maybe top 10 this season. Breath go. Yes, so, yes, so.